Got about three weeks worth of brain gravy all packed up in the cogitator here that I got to catch up on. So I might just give you a little gravy sampler of some subjects that eventually I will expand upon and explain myself if I just touch upon them here. But I got so much packed into the cogitator, I'm just let the seams burst and whatever comes out comes out. And then later on, I'll, I'll squeeze the remnants out. First, two of the most recent slideshows that I've uploaded. One called Holy Reptoids and the other one called Northern Lights or Aurora Borealis in New Mexico. The Aurora Borealis is evidence of the pole shift we're going through that I've mentioned plenty of times. Greg Braden indicated that during that time of the pole shift when magnetics reach zero point, that was the name of his series that I watched over 20 years ago, we would be able to see the Aurora Borealis or the Northern Lights all over the world in different places and there might even be more than one pole anyway multiple poles and that's what we're seeing when you see these colorful clouds that mb3 always points out and he always seems to say that they are in the proximity of the sun why they're always in the proximity of the sun probably because that's where the solar plasma is coming from penetrating the magnetic field and that's what creates both the northern lights and these stratospheric clouds that he calls the colorful clouds there's a technical name for them but those colorful clouds are ultimately the same thing as seeing the northern lights and he even mentioned the other day i saw some more of those colorful clouds below the equator which is even more unusual normally they don't get outside the arctic circle now we're seeing them clear below the equator and if you know what he's telling you there that means the magnetics are so far down we're seeing zero magnetics below the equator those those clouds are way out of bounds anyway so that slideshow I uploaded indicates we are in full pole shift. We be swinging. The other slideshow I uploaded, Holy Reptoid, is by a dude named KJ. KJ's What Happened. He uploads these, these videos. Kind of depicts the news for you. But you can see it for yourself. You make out for yourself whatever that is. It's at, uh, I indicated, I think it's like two minutes, two hours, 22 minutes and 22 seconds or something like that into the video. I'll include those links in the description here because we're going to talk a little more about KJ. But what that indicates to me, I'm going to include another link by Tiger Doug, who talks about the sons of God. And that's one of the sons of God that you're seeing right there. One of the things I uploaded on my way out to Missouri was that God loves all of his children. So, I'm going to give you a quick sampler, and that's one of the subjects that I'm going to just breeze over right now. I want to catch up to the most recent downloads I've received and work my way back. But one of the ones that are further back there is that that's one of the sons of God. You see, we received a DNA upgrade. Yeah, we came from monkeys, but it wasn't through a long, slow evolution. We received an upgrade from the primate to Cro-Magnon to Neanderthal to Homo sapien. And in between Cro-Magnon, when Cro-Magnon... When Neanderthal disappears, Cro-Magnon appears. As you're digging down through the layers of dirt, goes Neanderthal, Neanderthal, and then suddenly there's a fine line between Neanderthal and Cro-Magnon. And there is no in-between period where uh, they were evolving from one into the other. One disappears and the other one appears on the scene. Likewise with Neanderthal to Homo sapien. So we received a DNA upgrade. And when the Anunnaki were here creating a slave race, if you will, to mine the gold for them. There'll be lots of links in the description for you to research some of the stuff I'm saying. They were experimenting with many a different species that they were trying to create a race that was highly trainable, who could follow directions, who wasn't so smart they'd get bored easily and wander off, but was smart enough they could follow instructions. Trainable. And they experimented with a lot of different animals, and that's why you hear all these legends and tales about half man, half lion, half man, half bull. They elevated a lot of, they elevated us from the animal ancestors that we see as monkeys, baboons, chimpanzees, apes, to what we are now. They brought us from animals to a conscious being that we are. And they also brought 
a reptilian life form from animal ancestor that it once had to a conscious being. And that's probably what you're seeing in that lineup of Catholic priests. And one of them appears that his human hologram, as I was saying on the way out to Missouri, and if I keep repeating that, my point is, everything I said on the way out there, if I come across something where I have to retract it and say, hey, you remember that thing I said about this, that, or the other? The whole time while I was saying, this God don't lie. If I come across something and say, huh, I think that God lied. I will tell you. Nothing that I've said on the way out to Missouri th during this whole thing has been revealed to me to be inaccurate or incorrect. Though it may be incomplete, it was relayed to us at our level of understanding, which we can interpret it and make sense of it. My point is, Holy Reptoid, that was one of the sons of God. In the link by Tiger Doug, he will explain how this term, sons of God, has been used in the Bible to refer to humans and non-humans. In that lineup of Catholic priests, one of the sons of God that is non-human had his human hologram disappear. Imagine if suddenly the tables turned. Suddenly, all the reptiles that have a human hologram lose their hologram, and you as a human being gain a reptilian hologram. And then, poof, you're in a world where everyone's reptilian, but you are a human being inside of a hologram that makes you look like a reptile. And you have to keep it quiet. And you can only communicate to other people through subtle language to indicate that inside you know what you really are. And if it was revealed to the other real reptilians what you are, they would eat you. They would kill you. They would hunt you down. So you got to keep it real quiet. That's just a little sidebar note. Keep that in mind. We'll talk a little more about that later. What else are we going to talk about? The walk-in. What's the difference between the Holy Ghost and a walk-in? You might have heard of this thing about called a walk-in. Before I go on to the next subject, KJ's What Happened. His most recent upload, I'll include a link in the description, where he says, Are you ready for the shape-shifting demons? And he tells you that we've been being prepared for the arrival of our space brothers, and here's a quote, They're not our friends, and they're not here to help us. They're shape-shifting demons. Just the same shit you've been hearing from Richie from Boston and Call for an Uprising and multiple other people that insist whatever they look like, that's the shape-shifting part, and they're demons, which means they're not our friend and they're not here to help us. I'm going to expand upon that and tell you how we are the equivalent of of a group of people that have been locked inside of a cult. The likes of Jonestown, Jim Jones, that went down and created the People's Church in Jonestown in Guyana, created his own cult, and when the shit went down, he gave them all the Kool-Aid. That's where we get the term, drink the Kool-Aid. Our cult leaders will give us the Kool-Aid, and that may be what you see spreading over there in China right now, which mean it's go time for the big revelation. And we are the equivalent of North Korea about to get freed by the forces of freedom and democracy. This might be a good way to... This is the most recent. Then I'll work my way back to some of the other stuff. In North Korea, and I don't know anything about North Korea. I know what our perception of North Korea is. So based on that, I'm going to communicate this understanding based on what I know your understanding of North Korea is, because it's the same as mine. Truth is, I don't know shit about North Korea. But with our understanding of it, they worship their dear leader, Kim Jong-il, and then before that it was Kim Jong-un, and the whole Kim family. And they are kept in an animal state of existence. Like I said, we've been elevated from our animal state of existence, of primate, mammalian, to a conscious being. And so have other animals during the same time when the Anunnaki, the Elohim, were here creating the sons of God. And they tried many different versions. And it didn't take. The DNA didn't take. Eventually, I think it was Enki or Enlil's sister had to bear the first child. 
that was the hybrid that became us. Remember, your R complex at the center of your brain is covered by the mammalian brain and then the neocortex on top of that. That makes you a hybrid. We are the equivalent of a North Korea being kept, held captive and prisoner, kept in the dark, uneducated, and under a open air prison camp. And in North Korea or in any cult, they tell the members of that cult, everyone on the outside is the enemy, whether it's Jonestown, Jim Jones, my homegirl that just got free from the Jehovah's Witness, you'll be able to relate to what I'm saying. We are the good people, everyone on the outside is the out people. There is a group psychological dynamic of the in-group and the out-group. And the in-group is identified by a common characteristic, a quality, or a trait that defines us. And everyone that's not one of us is the bad guy. That is the brainwash that KJ is using when he says, they're shape-shifting demons, they're not your friend, they're not here to help. That's what Jim Jones told everybody. That if they come to free us, anyone, anyone who's not part of our group is the bad guy. So if you see anyone that's not one of us, they're not your friend and they're not here to help. And they are the enemy. And you are to kill them. Or capture them. And when it came down to it and the authorities were about to raid his whole compound, that's when he passed out the Kool-Aid. Well, guess what? While the cat's away, the mice have been playing God, and the mice know the cat's coming back, and the cat's coming in. And right now, the cat, I'll include the link in the description, and I don't remember which scripture it was, and I'm not big on scripture, because I'm not big on religion. And I'm going to show you how I have no fear when it comes to my experience that I've had with Jesus Christ, but not following these doctrines. But it said, I will pour out my spirit upon your flesh. And the young men will have visions and the old men will dream dreams. We're in those times. So it's like Air America broadcasting into North Korea. Before we invade North Korea to free the North Korean people, if we just barge in, they're all brainwashed that we're the enemy. So we have to soften their hearts a little bit. Talk to them. Get to know them. And before we barge in, we're going to want to get some broadcasts going. Radio broadcasts. Ham radio. Leaflets through uh, written communication. Any kind of communication. Lines of communication that you can get to some of the people within the North Korean compound cult. Before we barge right in, they will reject us. They've been brainwashed. We are the enemy in their mind. We have to... Try to get through to some of them so we can separate those that are willing to give peace a chance and those that are going to go down fighting for the cause and the collective and the community and the cult that they've been brainwashed and indoctrinated into. We as humans, not just Christianity, humans in general, have been indoctrinated into a cult where we think... Everyone outside is aliens that are here to eat us or enslave us or brainwash us or whatever. We project all of our worst traits onto others. All of the things that we fear about them are actually the worst characteristics of our own selves. If when we met a stranger, we thought, oh, hey, this is an opportunity for a new friendship, we would assume that that's what this stranger is going to think about us. But that's not what we do, so that's not what we assume they're going to do. What we do is exploit people, enslave people, kill people. All of these animalistic characteristics that we still have, we project onto them. And they are a higher level consciousness than we are. So our projecting onto them, all of our worst characteristics, is a logical fallacy. So in this scenario, I'm making two parallel scenarios here. When our space brothers reveal themselves to us prior to the big reveal, they have contacted many of us to soften our hearts. As KJ says, we've been being conditioned for this for quite a while now. But those that are committed to their own cult, 
Like KJ, his heart might be in the right place. He thinks he's upholding some sort of morals and ethics and virtues by saying, those are the shape-shifting demons, and they're not here to help, and they're not your friend. He thinks he's being a good Christian by doing that. What is a good Christian? For the most part, it is a fear-based fear of alienation and rejection by your peers. You have to recite the dogma and the doctrine in order to be getting a little pat on the head and told you're a good little Christian because you recited some of that shit you don't even understand. The reason there's 20 different translations is the same reason a cult leader, this world, every country is ultimately a cult leader that has kept humanity in the dark. Isolated. That's what a cult does. Isolate its people. We've been isolated from the rest of the world. There's 20 translations of the Bible because even within that one cult, they want to divide and conquer and keep everyone separated, arguing with the other in order that they cannot form a bond and a group dynamic where we have common cause, common characteristics, and that's why KJ says they're not here to help and they're not our friend because those are the two bases upon which we could develop some sort of bond. We would have a common cause. We would have a common motive if they were here to be our friend or they were here to help. We're about to get freed and each one of us is going to have a choice as an individual when you go in, when a soldier goes through Iraq, he comes across some villagers, he has to reflect exactly what they project onto him. And when he detects some fear and some hostility, he has to meet it with hostility and aggression. Or else he's risking himself. So he has to make some snap judgments real quick when he comes across some villagers. Are these open minded villagers? That are going to say, we don't believe all the brainwash of our dictators who have told us that you're the great Satan. And we're happy that you're here to free us from the tyranny of this prison camp that we ultimately live in. Whether it's under the dear leader Kim Jong-il or any of the other tyrannies around the world that we say we're going in there as a democracy. To free the people, right? Because Saddam Hussein is killing his own people. That's exactly what Jim Jones did when he saw that he was about to lose control of his compound. That's exactly what will happen here on planet Earth when the people who, the entities and people that rule this planet realize they're about to lose control and the outside forces are going to come in and free the minds of men from the tyranny that has been foisted upon us through this indoctrination that we're all alone. And that's the first indoctrination. Believe you're alone. But if you do see anyone from outside the compound, they're the enemy. They're not your friend. They're not here to help. Report them immediately to the authorities. So there is an event coming very soon. And I'm going to start, if I continue these videos, speaking to people as if that event has already happened. That event horizon is going to change everyone's mind and they're no longer going to have to filter everything I'm saying through their preconceived ideas and their worldview as it exists and try and mesh what I'm saying into your current worldview. Your worldview will be shattered and you will no longer have two primary fears. Fear of alienation and rejection by your peers for going outside the standard paradigm of reality and the tolerance of acceptable variation in your worldview because everyone's worldview will be shattered. So everyone will be grasping at threads and saying things that would have sounded crazy yesterday to try and explain what they are seeing and the reality they are experiencing today. After that dividing line, in the reality we're experiencing that day, you will not be able to try and process and comprehend what it is you're seeing and experiencing through your paradigm and your worldview of yesterday. You will no longer have the fear of your peers rejecting you based on you trying to see this world in a new way because they have to see the world in a new way too. And all the stuff they thought they knew yesterday that they would judge you and say, that's blasphemy, you're a heretic, doesn't apply today. 
so they lose their fear of alienation and rejection by their peers. Along with that same event horizon, they lose fear of alienation and rejection by God for thinking and believing and opening their mind to what has been indoctrinated into their brain as the enemy. That's the Antichrist. That's the serpent. That's the devil. Because shape-shifting demons ain't going to go very far when these are very real, physical people. And there may be holograms, some of which may be created by the current powers that be that control this world, and some of which may be created by the newcomers. The powers that be would want to create the holograms to uh, frame as a false flag to tell you, see, that's what they did. Now they're the enemy, because after this event horizon, you are not going to have a chance to decide whether or not you're with us or with the terrorists. Remember after 9-11? There is no middle room. You're with us or you're with the terrorists. It'll be like McCarthyism multiplied by terrorism. McCarthyism where, where, where they were hunting all the communist sympathizers. After 9-11, are you a terrorist sympathizer? Oh, this guy had some email and text message that makes it look like he's a terrorist sympathizer. After the event horizon, it will be easy... Back to the metaphor of the guy going through Iraq. When a guy's going through Iraq after we busted the place up and he comes into a village, he has to judge those people based on the hostility they show him. If they show him hostility, he's got to show them hostility. If they show him open-mindedness, soft-heartedness, he can reciprocate that to them. And this mirror will meet hostility with hostility and tolerance with tolerance. But there will be a psychological prison we're all put in, just like after 9-11. You're either with us, or you're with the terrorists. And anyone who questions whether or not these two buildings, or three buildings, were taken down by two planes that was conducted by some guy in a cave in Afghanistan who brought his box cutters with him, anyone who questions the official narrative, you're with them. You're a terrorist sympathizer. I got called a terrorist by my own family after 9-11. Because I didn't believe the official story and didn't go with the brainwashed, indoctrinated masses. And I asked questions that were unauthorized questions at the time. And after the re reveal, the grand revelation that is coming very soon, people will not, it will not be as it, right now we can talk about aliens and whether or not you think they're hostile or they could be friendly. There will be a time where the powers that be say you're with us or you're with them. And if you're not against them, then you're not with us because we're against them. The cult compound will lock down the mindset and the dialogue that is acceptable discussion. And there will not be any discussion of whether or not they're friendly. Just like after 9-11, there was no discussion as to whether or not the Arabs were friendly or the Muslims were friendly. But this will be a little different than after 9-11. It won't be just that they attacked us. It'll be that they've infiltrated us. And it could be anywhere. It could be your friends. It could be your neighbors. It could be your family members. Like McCarthyism multiplied by terrorism. You won't have the opportunity to say, you know, I think maybe they're not what we've been brainwashed into believing they are. Maybe it is we who are the cold-blooded animals and they who are the high-minded conscious beings and there is a better world outside of North Korea than what we've been trained to believe. And in our culture, we're kept at such a low level of existence for the reason of making us easily controllable through our animal instincts. Fear, kill or be killed, dog eat dog. And that outside this little North Korean peninsula where we've all been brainwashed, there's a better world. There's greater opportunities. There's a higher level of civilization where people don't treat each other like this. And I want to go see what it's like out there. Do you want to come with me? Let's just divide it up into some quick numbers. Let's say 25% of Kim's family that say, Oh, the dear leader! We love the Kim family! Kim and his people around him want to maintain the status quo. 
They want to maintain the power structure as it is because they've got the other 90% of the population providing their wealthy, luxurious, lavish lifestyle. They have enslaved all of North Korea to serve the Kim family. So the Kim family and any of his friends that he brings into the circle want to keep the circle as it is. They don't want the rest of the North Koreans learning that there's a better world out there and that this is a prison camp and that you've been brainwashed and that you're in a cult that's highly indoctrinated and your level of living and your existence here is shit compared to what it could be just outside of here. So they will do anything to keep the current status quo in place. And when they hear that the Americans or the United Nations or whoever is about to invade... They threaten to kill their own people before they will lose power. They've lived lavishly as a king. They're not going to go back to living as a regular worker. So they will die and kill everyone else to maintain the status quo as it is before they're going to let any outsiders ruin their party that they got going on. And that's what the United Nations is supposed to be. Taking warlords and cult leaders and breaking them up and saying, Alright, free the people. Let the people go. Put the gun down and let the kid, little kids go. Guess what? The United Nations doesn't do that for humanity when it comes to the outside forces. They tell us they're evil. Anyone on the outside is bad. Anyone outside of this There is nobody outside of this planet. We're all alone. But if you do see anyone... They're not your friend. They're not here to help. They're evil, shape-shifting demons. Right now, people are receiving the broadcast. The Holy Spirit. And I'm going to talk about the difference between a walk-in, which is basically what you might know of as a demonic possession, or the Holy Spirit. And the difference is consent. Is it consensual? Did you ask for this experience? But right now, the outsiders are trying to get through to some of the people, like America, sitting outside North Korea on their ham radio saying, we're actually your friends, we're going to come in and free you, we're, there's a much better world out here, you're in a prison camp right now, we know they brainwashed you and told you that we're the great Satan, but there's actually a much better life for you on the other side of this transition, through the transition it's going to be tumultuous, there's going to be some people die, but if you have faith, as Jim Morrison said, Desperately in need of some stranger's hand in a desperate land. Come on, baby, take a chance with us and meet me on the back of the blue bus. Say, driver, where are you taking us? But what's he say at the end of that song, which is called This Is The End? It hurts to let you, to set you free, but you'll never follow me. If you're one of those who is so brainwashed, you're going to fight to the death for the Kim family and the Kim regime. Well, then we've got to set you free, because you'll never follow me. And there's going to be about 20% of the population in Korea that is going to fight for the Kim regime. The inner circle, and those who are just so brainwashed, they feel the social, they will get, they fear alienation and rejection, and the power of the end of the barrel. So when you're an individual, and you know that 20% of the population is going to fight for the Kim regime, here on human, Team Humanity, 20% of the population is saying, yeah, it's War of the Worlds, I'm going to take me down some green lizards. You can either go with that 20%. On the other side of that, there is not a cohesive group that says, no, we are all united in our common cause, and have formed a union, and have... A uh, 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 collective decision that we are going this way. So you will have one group of 20%, even if it's only 20%, that's going to fight for the Kim family, the regime, to maintain, to keep from regime change happening here on planet Earth, and the other 80% are all individuals having to decide for themselves. Your psyche, the collective, there's safety in numbers, so part of that decision making process will draw you toward, well, you got 20% of the population. That's like 50 million people over there saying they're going to fight these green bastards off till their death. What about the other 7.5 billion people on the planet? You got 50 million over here, or 500 million, that are saying they're ready to stand up against these green bastards. And the other 7.5 billion aren't sure where they stand, but you got these 500 million that have forged the coalition of the willing. Are you with us? Are you with them? 